Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge, day number three. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior XD Evangelist here at Adobe, and we have a fun one for you today. So let me hop straight over to my screen, and this is the Daily Creative Challenge landing page, behance.net slash daily creative challenge. And if you haven't yet, hit that big blue register button at the top. That way you're notified through your Creative Cloud app when we release new challenges. And every single day, except the weekends, we're, gonna, we're releasing a new challenge. And you're gonna be joining me at 8.30 bright and early Pacific time every day to kick off that challenge. And then you're gonna be using Adobe XD to design and prototype it. Then you have until March 29th to submit all of your entries. But as I've mentioned in the past, it's not a competition. We're doing this to help you build up your new skills, old skills, new skills, whatever skills you want, build up a portfolio and really start attracting some clients. So down here, you can grab XD completely for free. Who doesn't love that? And then join us on Slack. Let me hop over to Slack. We currently have almost 17,000 people in our Slack channel. We have an announcement section, ask a question section, chat, design feedback. We've got, got some great mentors in Slack, including Chris Cannon, uh, Zachary, and Peter, who are in there all the time giving feedback. And you know, it's a, it's a good time. We've got a lot of cool people in there. We've got Andy in there who's all the time helping out. It's a great community. So definitely join us there. So what have we done so far in the Daily Creative Challenge? Well, we started off on Tuesday by creating a navigation bar at the top of our landing page. We moved on to marketing real estate, which really talks about some of the banner images and some of the marketing material that you might want to use to attract customers to buy some of your products through sales or events or things like that. And then today we're gonna to look at displaying some top products and we're gonna be using the Google Sheets plugin. I'm really excited about this one. It's, it's a really cool idea. And if you've noticed kind of what we're doing, we're, it's a progressive challenge, kind of like the last time where we're trying to tackle a, a case study and we're going to you know, talk, talk about some of the things that maybe are not necessarily working on websites and then try to improve them. So today we're definitely gonna be making sure that customers when they land on our landing page, that they see the products that they might want that might be on sale to you know, get some additional revenue. So. Let me hop over to Adobe XD, and this is the template that we've been working on. You're gonna be using the same template throughout the whole two weeks, and this was provided by the amazing Marissa Blair. There's a lot of great content and elements in this, and if you missed day one and day two of the challenge, definitely go back and check that out. I showed how you can start adding some colors and character styles to your assets panel, which will certainly help out throughout the process. So let's hop over here and this is where we're at so far. And I've taken a look at a lot of your entries that have come in and it's making mine look not that great. So, you know, you're, you're all doing an amazing job. You know, you know, we're gonna run with it. So, so today what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be adding, let me go to design mode. We're gonna be adding some cards right about here. We're gonna do, probably do three across and three down, but of course you can do six across or however many you feel you need. And this will showcase some of the products that we might want users and uh, visitors to buy on this website. So we're gonna start off fairly simple. We're gonna grab the rectangle tool over to the left and just draw one out from right around here to maybe about there. That's probably pretty good. And right now we have the viewport height set to around this point. We may have to go back at some point to change it to make it a little bit longer or make the entire page a bit longer. We can definitely tweak that as time goes on. So I have my rectangle. I'm gonna round out the corners a little bit because who doesn't love rounded corners? I'm gonna set the fill to somewhere around gray, not too gray, but also not too white. And then the border is gonna be nice and subtle, somewhere right about there. Perfect. Now within this card, I also want an image. So I'm gonna duplicate this card, Command and Control D, and just make this, I'm gonna move this up a little bit. I'm gonna change the fill to white, and I probably don't need a border on this shape. And then just bring, the, bring this in. I'm holding down my Alter Option key to drag this inwards, and I'll do the same for the top. And I might wanna change the border just a little bit. Perfect. All right, maybe I'll make this a little bit longer so we have room for some of the elements that we wanna throw on this card. Great. So now that we have this, I'm going to, in my layers panel, I'm gonna name this image. And I'm gonna name this card just so we know. And it's also gonna help a lot when we actually tackle the Google Sheets plugin. So now that this is ready to rock, 
I'm gonna grab my text tool over here. I can also use the T key on my keyboard and simply type out product name. Perfect. I'm gonna set the color to somewhere of a dark color. Great. And I'm gonna move that into place. I can always change this later. And that's one of the beauties of repeat grids, which we'll get to in a second. We can always make changes and it'll distribute distribute throughout the grid. So we got product name there. Maybe it'll make it a little bit smaller. And then right below, I'm gonna just duplicate this layer by holding down alter option and dragging downwards. And this is going to be price. And because these are probably gonna be on sale, I'm gonna set these to red. Great. All right, we're gonna keep it simple, but we can always make changes later on. So now that we have our card created and we have all of our layer names up to date, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna select all the elements that make up this card. And then over here to the right, I'm gonna hit the repeat grid button. Boop. Now we'll add these two new handles, one to the right and one at the bottom. And that will allow me to pull them out just like this. So now we, now we have three going across and three down. And I can just move my mouse in between any of them and just adjust the padding just like that. Make sure this is centered in the middle of my document. And it is. Make the spacing a little bit bigger down here. Perfect. All right, so our cards are looking good. Let me just move this down a little bit. Great. So now there's a few things that we have to do. We have to add some content in here, including images, text, and you know, who else? Who, who knows what else? We, we'll probably add a few other things in here. There's a few ways we can do that. We can do that using Finder or Windows Explorer, just grabbing some content, dropping it in. We can do it manually. But if you're working on a large website, there's a good chance that you're working with a copy editor or a marketing team that's providing you with something that might look like this. Whether it's a Google Sheet or a CSV file, they might have a column for product names, they might have a column for prices or images. So we wanna be able to grab this and just you know import this directly into Adobe XD and let XD do its thing. So we're gonna copy this URL here. And if you are following along with this challenge in the template, let me hop back over to XD for a second. In our template right over here, you can grab the Google Sheets uh, sheet right here. You just copy that URL, paste it in your browser of choice, and then copy that URL and follow along with me. So now that we have this here, I'm gonna select my entire repeat grid, go up to the plugins menu, and on Windows, it's over to the left under the hamburger. And I already have the Google Sheets plugin installed, but if you don't have it installed, go to discover plugins. Here's the window here, and just type in either Google Sheets or just Sheets, and bam, there it is. So install that one, and it's gonna appear under your plugins menu. Go down to Google Sheets, and if you have a public Google Sheet link, you can use that one, or if you have a CSV, you can do that right there. So I'm gonna paste my public link, just paste it right there and continue. And XD is, and Google Sheets plugin and XD are kind of linking together right now. So it's noticing that on my XD document, there's an image layer, and there's also an image column on Google Sheets. Same with product name, product name, price, and price. And I don't have to worry about card because I'm not really doing anything with that. If I want to randomize the content, I can do that, but I'm gonna keep it in chronological order and press apply and watch what happens. Bam. It basically took, well, not basically, it literally took all the items here up to card number six and just loaded them all in to, into each and every card. But I, you know, I have more than six rows here. So if I extend, if I need to extend my sheet, you're noticing it's also loading in the ones that weren't visible immediately. So it loads in everything. And if you don't have enough repeat grids, it'll repeat it. And if you don't, if you have too many, you know, it just does its thing. So now that we have all of our cards here, everything's looking pretty good. We can start making changes if we wanted to. And that's, again, the beauty of repeat grids. Let's say I wanted the price over to the right instead of below it. I can just jump into my repeat grid, grab the price, and I'll move it over here just like that, and it updated on all of my repeat grids. Maybe I also want, let's say, a rating system. So over here, Marissa did provide us with these lovely stars, but I'm gonna show you how to create a repeat grid like that. So I'm gonna just copy one of these stars, hop, hop back over here into one of my repeat grids, Boop, paste it there. I'm gonna make one of these stars a little bit larger. Great, make sure it lines up, and you're noticing those smart guides definitely help us line up our content and with one star i'm going to command or control r to create another repeat grid and just drag one out make these a little bit squishier 
And let's say I want four and a half stars. I can just do that. One, two, three, four and a half. Perfect. And I, you know, I might want to also change the color of these stars. I can do that. And again, it's distributing throughout the entire repeat grid. Perfect. That's looking pretty good. Now I might want a title for this section. So in that case, I probably want to make my artboard a little bit bigger. So I'm going to double click on the artboard, drag this down, move the footer down a little bit, move my repeat grid down just a touch. And then right here, let's type out on sale now. Make it a touch bigger just so we can really see it. And I'll probably make it a nice dark color. There we go. And then right beside, I might want shop all. So if you want to see more items that are on sale, you can do that. This one is going to be a blue. So we know it's a link and I'm also going to underline it. There we go. And it probably doesn't have to be as big. Perfect. That's looking good. I might want to make this one a little bit more bold. That looks great. Now I could also have a title for the second row of elements. All I have to do is just extend my repeat grid downwards or actually, you know, change the padding, duplicate this down a little bit. And this would be the perfect, perfect, perfect toys. There we go. Grab the shop all link, move that over a little bit. That looks good. And there we go. And now we can adjust this as well. So everything looks fancy. Perfect. Now, of course, if you are working with multiple artboards, all I would have to do now is maybe select all of these, group them. This could be, uh, what was this? Top products. Copy those, paste them on this artboard, paste them on this artboard. And then just make changes. I can select both of these artboards actually. Drag this down, select both of the footers across both artboards, drag those down as well. There we go. And now we have our top products on all of our artboards looking really nice. And we created all of this stuff, all of these entries using the Google Sheets plugin. So again, if you have a Google Sheet or a CSV file and you're working with a marketing team or whoever it might be, definitely give this a shot. I think. You know, it's definitely going to come in handy if you are working with larger teams who have a lot of content, a lot of uh, information that they need to just very quickly put into an application like Adobe XD. So that'll do it for today. I hope this helps all of you. I can't wait to kick off tomorrow's challenge bright and early 830 in the morning, and I'll see you all very soon.